How do we know what is real? So thank you so much, Samir. I'm very excited to be talking to you and to Digidot. In uh, it's been a magazine that I've been reading since I was a kid. So I'm, I'm kind of very glad to be uh, in the magazine. So to talk about the partnership between the Matrix and of course Epic Games and the UE5 demo that you saw with with it. Uh, it's a pretty interesting tale, right? We have uh, Kim Libreri, who is the CTO of Epic, uh, and he uh, he has a you know a long career of working with major Hollywood pictures, including the Matrix trilogy, and he of course kept in touch with uh, Lana Wachowski, uh, and this is kind of what opened up the doors for us to have access to the IP and the assets for the Matrix, um, and and that's kind of where the story begins. And we, as a company at Epic, we are very committed to the idea of uh, of metaverse and of course uh, with epic and unreal engine being very closely working with both games and film and, uh, and animation industry and that's kind of why we wanted to have work very closely with the director and make sure that pretty much all the shots that you're get, getting in the matrix including the the iconic bullet time sequences are all recreated in engine which satisfies both the game mechanics and also our metaverse vision and of course our film and animation uh, initiatives which has been where unreal engine has been used quite a bit uh, you know for for even final pixel rendering out of the engine yeah so now while we were talking i'm sure a lot of our viewers have gotten a glimpse of what this demo looks like and the one of the most important questions that we get asked is why is this demo not available for pc gamers you know the pc is still the an ultimate hardware for uh, gaming so everybody wants to know when they can experience this on a pc yeah i mean the demo itself is going to be out uh, for all the developers to download with of course the matrix elements and the ip removed off of it so the entire city of uh, san francisco that you are seeing in that film this is actually a combination of multiple cities but it looks like san francisco uh, and the um, and all of the, the the ai that you're going to see there all of the explosion the, all of the physics and including the 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 meta humans that you see walking around in the city all of that will be available for developers on a pc uh very soon and that's that's entirely the plan of this uh, of this matrix awaken uh, itself uh, demo itself uh, it's right now on a console because it's a you know it's a more controlled environment and it's also a, a nice place for you to uh, to see what is going to be coming up with uh, or what is possible for developers when they're developing for consoles using uh, unreal engine yeah absolutely now when you're talking about developing for a console uh, there's been a lot of speculation a lot of conversation about how the Xbox series S is you know the weakest link this generation of course it's a very accessible price point for people that want to get into gaming but the, and you know we've read a lot of articles that say that the coalition uh, who is one of microsoft's developers they're making the next gears of war game uh, using unreal engine 5 right so they they're working with unreal really closely to ensure the series S can be maximized with its potential how does unreal look at this you know this baby of a console when compared to the other juggernauts out there is it a console that's limiting the next generation well i don't necessarily want to talk about xbox series s and how and 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 you know but it's it is a very accessible console but we want to make unreal 5 accessible to as many developers as possible and that we have been doing that through through our engineering efforts so i just want to get a little technical over here right uh, one of the fantastic algorithms that we use in unreal engine 5 is called temporal super re super resolution or tsr technology and yes. this is a and and that is how like you know your uh, your consoles like PS5 or Xbox, which is actually using just AMD powered consoles and it really lacks that NVIDIA's heavyweight ray tracing uh, course, right? Uh, how does this really work? Uh, that's thanks to TSR, which is Temporal Super Resol Resolution. All it really does uh, fundamentally is it keeps your textures in a fairly low resolution, uh, you know, even below 4K. If you're if we, if if the camera is like you know or if the, if the screen or whatever is being looked at is very far away, and as you kind of go in, it's able to really um, uh, you know super sample essentially uh, figure out like what is the most impressive or what is the one that requires a lot of this kind of high resolution and automatically does that every frame at an extremely fast uh, pace. And that's why if you if you close up to Neo, for example, in the in the demo, 
you're able to see his wrinkles you're able to see his hair you're able to see the lighting fantastically well but if you're going into the city all the all the uh, objects that are close in the city are looking fantastic but those are that are very far away actually don't look um or you don't really notice the difference but they're actually super sampled to be like very low resolution but it does it so fast and in fact in fact if you play the demo there's a few uh, options that you get you can either walk through the city or you can even just like a buzz or like you know really fly through the city and you never notice the difference everywhere you go in the city is high resolution and looks high resolution but what's really happening behind the scenes is like just calculating extremely fast about what needs to be close what needs to be very far off and then it's like doing the kind of uh, temporal super resolution at that pace and that's kind of how how you're able to see that uh, demo being fairly impressive yeah so i'm pretty sure this uh, the way the super resolution is of course going to work is because the assets can be really loaded in really fast which brings into question the new ssds right the playstation 5 has this really really uber powerful ssd even the xbox has a fairly powerful ssd microsoft also is talking about uh, tech like variable rate shading like you said which is another way of uh, it's uh, you know super sampling where only that which is in focus is in high resolution similarly sony has spoken about how assets can be loaded in so fast it's almost like it's a virtual ram so that you have these high resolution textures coming in all this is very new in consoles especially when you see where the ps4 and the xbox one is coming from so how, i mean you've spoken a little bit about how you've leveraged these technologies but can you also talk a little bit more about how you know these we've not seen the potential of these consoles yet right the unreal engine 5 is one step as to what games will look like in 2023 so can you talk a little bit about the new hardware on these consoles and how these games are going to look uh, when you know unreal engine 5 is finally up for developers absolutely uh, some of some of the features that i'd like to specifically talk about in unreal engine 5 which you'll be able to see in consoles or in games that's coming out on the consoles and pcs in fact uh, very soon like you know for example in the matrix uh, you you are uh, you, you see like a very high lightness of Keanu Reeves uh, as a digital human being and to achieve this we work with three lateral team in epic which is part of the epic family to create this high fidelity 3d scans of uh, Keanu Reeves uh, and and they are the same team that is working on the meta human creator now meta human creator uh, if you're unfamiliar with it is a free tool that's available where, where you're able to create this high a uh, high resolution very realistic looking human beings right from your browser and you're just able to import it inside unreal engine it's free for, if you use it in the inside unreal engine uh you're also seeing open world city environments where in once again in this demo you have the hero character uh, her name is io um and she'll be available for you to download uh, you know because it's not part of the matrix ip but that she's also a meta human and you have thousands of them you have thousands of meta human agents all of that in this open world city environment all of them demonstrating how you could have add those kind of uh, artificial intelligence and make them behave as if they are part of the city uh, and talking about ai you also have like characters and vehicles which are all procedurally built uh, and in fact the city also is also procedurally built using houdini and using unreal engine 5's world partitioning system you're also able to develop these vast in, uh, environment and make them also quite manageable uh you can also talk about vehicles uh, which i just talked about but you also have vehicles character clothing destruction of buildings all of that is simulated right inside the engine using the chaos physics system so in fact if you play the demo there's a chase sequence right and the car crashes uh and uh, and but the crash is never the same every time like if you keep playing it you'll notice that the crash is it's it's not it's not authored it's just running in real time using chaos so the same crash will never occur twice uh so what and finally the, the biggest uh, showcase of 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 uefi is of course nanite and lumen uh, nanite is of course the the ability had to have virtualized micro polygon geometry and lumen allows you to have uh, real time global illumination uh, and in fact in the entire demo uh, while you're walking in the daylight there's only one source of light which is the sun which is how typically the world real world works but that's not how games have been working previously but now you you have one sun uh, which does fantastic global illumination and you're able to and you're able to walk through the city as if uh, it looks real so i think those are all the features within unreal engine 5 that you'll be able to see in consoles and developers will be able to to uh, leverage those capabilities in order to make uh, games look the way they do look in the in the matrix uh, demo
Yeah, just to add to what you said, I mean, with the global illumination with Lumen, when you switch to night in the demo, you can actually see the buildings are lit, the, yeah. the street lights are lit, and, and the lighting looks a little more realistic than what we've seen in games in the past to what it would actually be in the night time. So in more than the day, it's the night lighting, which absolutely looked uh, incredible. Now, uh, speaking of the fact how Unreal Engine has been showcased, I mean, way back in the day, you had Unreal Tournament, which was just, you know, a game which was released. And of course, it was based on Unreal Engine. Can we expect, uh, I know Fortnite is, of course, going to uh, move to Unreal Engine 5. The news has been out. But can we expect uh, Epic to make, a, you know, full-blown Matrix-like, maybe an action-adventure game, maybe something that really shows off the potential of the engine, a full-blown game in the future rather than just a demo? Well, I can't really talk about that, but what I can talk about is that we are building an ecosystem for developers to start building their own games. Uh, so a lot of the acquisitions, a lot of the partnerships that we have, that we have been doing is primarily focused on, on creating an ecosystem where, of course, uh, we, are, we, eat, we, we dog food our, our, uh, our products, right? Like even if like Fortnite is now in Unreal Engine 5 and of course Matrix demo itself is, is Unreal and, and using a lot of the capabilities that we are talking about. But we, we want to give this out to developers. So, and so they're also able to create these kind of games and of course the metaverse experiences uh, using the ecosystem. Now we are talking about Unreal Engine, which is of course at the heart of it. And then MetaHuman Creator is also available for you to use. Uh, we have Quixel mega scans where you're able to get high quality photogrammatized assets right inside your engine. Uh, you have the Epic online services, which allows you like free multiplayer capabilities. You have the Epic game store, uh, where you're able to publish your game through it. And then of course there's uh, reality capture where if you want to do your own photogrammetry and one of the things that we keep hearing is like, and I want to use my own assets that I see, like, and I want to use this cup, for example, and use it in my game. Uh, how do I do that? You can use it using, do that using reality capture and then Sketchfab, which is a fantastic marketplace for 3D assets. And you can look at, look at the 3D assets right in the browser. Now, this is the kind of, because I'm, of course, I'm just talking about like a subset of it, right? But you get the picture, you get the idea, which is through the use of Epic Games ecosystem uh, and all of the, all of the uh, tools that I just talked about right now, you are able to create the next gen kind of uh, a gaming experience, which is all dog fooded by us. So all of the game, all of the assets and all of the stuff that you're going to, that you're seeing, including pixel mega scans is used by us at Fortnite uh, or at, you know, other games that we make like Rocket League or anything else. So, uh, and, and, and that's kind of where we are. Uh, so what can you expect from Epic? Uh, I think we'll be giving you a lot more tools that have been tried and tested by us in our own games. Uh, before it is handed over to you for you to also create a fantastic experience for yourself. Yeah, I mean, the proof is in the pudding, right? You have a game like Gears 5, which is based on Unreal Engine or the Batman Arkham series, which is based in the Unreal Engine. And those games look just so breathtaking even today when you play at least uh, Arkham Knight and Gears 5, right? So it's just... Yeah. We, it's just like patiently waiting to see the first, even uh, Hellblade Senua Saga, for example, is going to be in Unreal Engine 5. And the demo showed off again in December, just looked absolutely unreal, if okay. one can say that. Uh, my last question, of course, is moving slightly away from games is, uh, we know that Unreal Engine was used as a real-time background generator in the show The Mandalorian, for example, right? To uh, give a better green screen-like effect, more real-time. So can you talk a little bit about how Unreal Engine 5 is also going to translate into non-gaming related uh, creative spaces? Absolutely. So film and animation is, is also a very important place for us uh, when we want to realize the vision of the metaverse. In fact, we believe that the metaverse is going to take place in with, with LED screens and screens around you. And film and animation is, a, is an industry that has been uh, pioneering when it comes to using TV show special effects like the Mandalorian that you talked about. Uh, of course, so you know we are seeing a broad adoption of Unreal Engine across a lot of industries. So we are seeing uh, uh, you know it being used for in-camera VFX like in film. Film. We are seeing it being used for uh, final rendering for animation uh, projects. Uh, so uh, a lot of uh, TV shows, including in India, for example, there is uh, there's a show that's coming out called uh, Garud. Um, I believe that's being uh, that's 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 uh, that's that's being that's that uses Unreal Engine, uh, and we are also uh, and this is in India by the way, and we're also seeing adoption in an architecture industry, 
Uh, we're also seeing an adoption in simulation, in automotive. So a lot of these, uh, a lot of these industries verticals that you typically don't have uh, or think about uh, using real time or, or beginning to use real time technologies primarily because it uh, because you have the, the high resolution rendering capabilities and the collaboration capabilities uh, and the ability to have agnostic assets that you can bring in so you know whether it's a cad file whether it's a fbx file whether it's an alembic file or a gltf file you're able to just bring them in inside uh, unreal engine and you can start working and all of that is being rendered in real time uh, specifically, I want to just also talk about in India, uh, uh, there's also a broader option of uh, Unreal Engine for film and animation through efforts that we've been putting like the Shots Film Challenge, uh, where we uh, where we where we had like 13 different studios come in and try out Unreal Engine and they created shots. We've also been driving adoption of uh, Unreal in film and animation through the Women's Creative Program, where we identified uh, almost two dozen women uh, in in this uh, area uh, in, of film and animation, who then work with Unreal Engine, and we train them in order to create short films. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of interest uh, of using Unreal Engine, and I think it all goes to our overall vision of the metaverse. So that you know, it, it's not just constrained to games. But of course, games is the beginning point. But then we're going to see more and more people, more and more verticals, including fashion and shopping, for example, uh, adopting this kind of tech. Absolutely. Uh, those are the questions I had and you've in fact answered more of the questions than what I had in some of the answers you've given. Is there anything else you'd like to highlight before we close? No, I think I just want to, I just want to say that for Epic, uh, in, uh, India and Southeast Asia, I'd say India specifically is a very important uh, market. Uh, we have a, a small team right now, but we're of course you know, uh, expanding, but we have a team that's set up here and we are seeing more and more usage of uh, Unreal Engine across the verticals that we just talked about. Uh, so uh, if, if anyone is interested in, in, in training, uh, we in fact provide free training for anyone who wants to learn Unreal Engine in India. In fact, one of the things that we often see uh, people complain about is also the inability to have hardware or beefy hardware that can run Unreal Engine, for example. We also provide free virtual machines for them so they could get trained through these virtual machines. So it's all about learning. The assets are there, the entry barrier to learning Unreal Engine and to make use of this real, real time tech is very, very low. Uh, so it's, it's uh, you know, if you, if you want to get trained, if you want to get um, uh, uh, really upskill yourself with this new tech, uh, we are here for you. All right, that's great. So for every one of you that's watching and is an aspiring game developer or just wants to get your hands dirty with Unreal, you have all the sources right here at your disposal, locally available in India. Thank you so much for joining me on uh, this, uh, Arvind. It was a great pleasure talking to you and it was even a lot more fun experiencing the Matrix demo. And I'm really looking forward to some of the games coming in Unreal Engine 5 in the future. Thank you so much for this. And for the rest of you, you can subscribe to the channel to stay updated with everything from the world of technology. We will catch you in another video. It's goodbye for now.